Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at conservation of energy, which is also known as the first law of thermodynamics. Now, the most basic statement of the first law is that energy is neither created nor destroyed. For us, what that means is that if we are looking at the change of energy in a system, then that is going to be equal to the heat transferred into the system minus the work done by the system. This delta U is a change in the internal energy inside our system. This Q is the heat transferred into the system. Heat transfer occurs in methods such as conduction, convection, or radiation. We're not going to deal with the details of that heat transfer today. We're just going to say that in some method, heat is being transferred into our system. And then finally, this W is the work done by the system. And it's negative here because if the system is doing work on something else, that means that it's giving its energy away. Now, our example for this problem is going to be a piston, which is inside a cylinder. And also inside this cylinder, we're going to have a mixture of steam and water. So when I'm talking about this word system back here, we can define our system to be whatever we want, but there's usually a pretty clear choice that makes our analysis easier. In this case, our system is going to be defined by all of this volume that is beneath our piston, which is going to contain that steam and water. Now, what we're going to do with this problem is add some heat to it. And like I said, we're not too interested in the details of how that heat is getting into the system, but we know that in some way it is. And then because we're adding heat, that's going to increase the amount of steam because that water is going to boil and that will cause our piston to be pushed up. And that piston being pushed up is an example of work. Now, one thing we can do with our piston here is make it so that it exerts a constant force downward onto our system. And if we have a constant force with a constant area, that means that we have a constant pressure. So this system is going to be undergoing what we call constant pressure expansion because the volume is getting larger. Now let's define just a few more things about our system as we start off. So the total amount of mass in our system is going to be two kilograms. That includes both the water and the steam. The pressure is going to be one megapascal and our quality or the percentage of steam by mass is going to be 40%. Now, if we were to plot this on a steam PV diagram, we know that there is a curve that defines the vapor envelope. And our first point here is gonna start inside that curve. So let's define our state one like so. Now, this is just a diagram. We're not trying to be perfect or precise with it, but it's enough to tell us where we're going to go in order to find our data. Now, we are undergoing constant pressure expansion, and what that means is that we are increasing our volume at constant pressure. So this is going to be a straight line directly to the right. And we're actually going to keep expanding until we are past the pure steam line. And so our state two is actually in the superheated zone of our PV diagram. And let's go ahead and define the temperature of that state two. We're gonna set that to 350 degrees Celsius. So at this point, we actually have enough information to completely define everything about both state one and two. So what we'll do now is just build a table that will contain all of that information. And the quantities that we're going to be interested in are pressure and temperature, just because those are things that are given. And then we'll need U because we're interested in this delta U, use this in a specific internal energy. Then we'll need specific volume once we get to work. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then finally, the quality was given for one of our states. So we need that value as well. 
So looking at just things that are given, we have one megapascal at state one. We have 350 degrees Celsius for state two. And then our quality for state one is 0 0.4. Additionally, we know that this process is under constant pressure. And so the pressure for state two has to be the same as that for state one. So state two will also be at one megapascal. At this point, we should try to go to the tables in order to figure out these other two values, U and V for both states. Let's look at state two first, because it's actually relatively easy to get those numbers. We know from our PV diagram that we're going to be in the superheated region. And so we're going to go to the superheated tables in order to find this data. Specifically, we need to find the superheated tables where the pressure is equal to one megapascal. And from there, we'll read off directly where the temperature is 350 degrees Celsius. So grabbing those values, we find that U is 2875.7 and the units there are kilojoules per kilogram. And our specific volume is 0 0.2825 with units of meters cubed per kilogram. Just for completion's sake, we can say that the quality for state two doesn't make sense, right? There's, there's no quality outside of our vapor curve. And so we can just nix that completely. Now for state one, we need to do a little bit more work. We can go to the saturated tables because we know that we're inside this saturated region. And so from there, we can say that the specific internal energy at one megapascal for a saturated fluid is 761.39 kilojoules per kilogram. Then we can find the same for the gas and this one is 2582.7 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, in order to actually find our state, we use our quality. And so we can say that U1 is equal to the percentage of our mass that is made of steam, so that's 0 0.4 or 40%, multiplied by our UG value, the specific internal energy of that steam, plus the remainder, so 0 0.6, multiplied by this internal energy of water, which is that 761.39. And doing that math, we end up with a U1 value of 1489.9 kilojoules per kilogram, which we can then fill in in our table over here. And now we can do the exact same thing for our specific volume. So for water at one megapascal, that value is going to be 0 0.00113 meters cubed per kilogram. And then for steam, that value is 0 0.19436 meters cubed per kilogram. And so once again, we can find V1 by taking 0.4 times our steam value plus 0.6, the remainder, times our water value. And this time that value comes out to be 0 0.0789 meters cubed per kilogram. And so we have our specific volume for state one from those calculations. So now we have all the information from both of those states. We can go ahead and tackle the conservation of energy problem. So starting out, let's change this up just a little bit, we're going to recognize that delta capital U, this is the extensive property. That's going to be equal to mass multiplied by delta lowercase u. And so this is equal to our two kilograms multiplied by the difference in our internal energies here. And so this is our 2875.7 value minus our 1489.9 value. And doing that math gives us a value of 2771.6 kilojoules. And so this right here is the first part of our conservation of energy. Now, like I said, we're not gonna go any deeper in order to figure out what our Q value is. Instead, 
we're going to figure out what the work done by our system is. And we can actually think about that pretty well from our PV diagram, because we know that work is equal to our force multiplied by our distance. In this case, we're thinking about the force that our piston is applying and multiplying that by the amount of distance that it's moving. Well, really, it's kind of a pain to deal with the uh, total amount for all this. And so instead, we're going to look at a differential amount of work, which is going to be equal to our force multiplied by some dx, which is a differential amount of distance that this thing is moving. This force is hard to quantify right now, but it's actually pretty simple to just split that up into pressure and area. And so then we get pressure times area times dx. But that means that we can make one more simplification. If we take this area times dx, we can actually turn that into a differential volume. And so if we want to find the amounts of work, we can actually say that this is the integral of pressure with respect to the volume. But just like before, it's easier for us to work with the mass specific values than it is to work with our extensive properties. And so we're going to bring out a mass from this. We're going to recognize that our volume is equal to mass times the specific volume. So this ends up being a mass multiplied by the integral of P D V. And now we can actually give limits to this. So this is going to be integrating from V1 to V2. Well, with this equation, we can actually draw that out on our PV diagram. That value is actually going to be the area underneath our curve. So the work is just the integration of this line. So putting that back into math, this pressure is constant for this problem. So the actual integration is really simple. We get to bring that pressure out of the integral, and then this integral just becomes the integral of dv. Well, that's just going to end up being v2 minus v1. So plugging all this in, we get 2 kilograms multiplied by 1 megapascal multiplied by the difference in our specific volumes here. So this is 0 0.2825 and the units there are meters cubed per kilogram, minus 0 0.0789. I'll omit the units for that one just because we're out of space. But that gives us our work. Now, working through that math really quickly, our work is going to be equal to 408.2 kilojoules. And so that gives us our second value up in our conservation of energy equation. So we know the amount of energy it takes to change the internal energy. We know the amounts of energy that's leaving the system because of work. And with those two pieces, we're able to figure out what the total amount of heat transfer into the system had to be. So the last piece of the puzzle here is to say that Q is going to be equal to our delta U plus our W. And so that total value is going to be 3179.8 kilojoules. So just to recap, delta U comes specifically from that specific internal energy, the difference between the two states, multiplied by the mass. Work comes from this integral of PdV, which we're able to integrate very easily for a constant pressure problem. And then finally, we can find heat transfer by adding the change in internal energy and the work done by the system. This is all done for a single process. Moving on from this, we're going to be looking at cycles, which are combinations of processes. So this is a building block that we will be using to do more interesting things. In any case, I hope this video was helpful, and I will catch you next time.